Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Jesse Morse, a board certified family and sports medicine physician in Miami, and we're going to talk about one of my favorite drugs called methylene blue. Now, this has recently gotten media attention because it appears that this was what Robert F. Kennedy Jr. was dropping into his cup while he was on a plane. Now, this is just a recent media example. This was talked about recently as well on the Joe Rogan podcast with Mel Gibson, and, and, and that got a little bit of hype as well. Well, let me kind of give you a medical opinion of it and, 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 and from someone who uses it daily, who personally takes it and understand the risks, understand what it has the potential to do and why you've probably never heard of it. Is this a new drug? No, this has been around since the 1800s, way before traditional medicine ever existed. Antibiotics were created in the 1940s. This has antibiotic and antimicrobial, antiparasitic activity. The molecule itself is was the first synthetic drug ever created. It actually is the parent molecule of something called hydroxychloroquine, which they use to treat malaria. They also use it uh, because of its properties in other things not in medicine, and namely cleaning and even dyeing blue genes. So it has some kind of cool, funky properties. They use it in traditional medicine really only for two things carbon monoxide poisoning and cyanide poisoning. So if you go to an ER with either of those, you're likely to get an IV version of methylene blue. I'm in clinic today and here's what the bottle looks like. This is an IV form. I'm gonna put it back in the fridge when I'm done. Here is also an oral form. There is not an injectable form that I've ever seen or heard of. There is an oral capsule form, which is what I take. It looks like this. And there is an oral um, uh, liquid or lozenge form that is usually not a medical grade. Now, I'll tell you about some of the issues with it in a sec, but what does it do? So this is a cool drug that works predominantly in the mitochondria, which is kind of what I call the engine to the cell and really the engine to all of our cells. And the issues with most of us experience in life due to different diseases are due to mitochondrial issues. So if you were to try to address the root cause, you'd wanna go at the mitochondria, which is what this does. It actually enters the cell through something called the CoQ10 receptor, which is the, the uh, supplement that many people take. And it actually goes in and works at the electron transport chain, which is how we generate energy and make ATP, that thing you learned in biology in, in, in fifth grade that you never thought you'd have to hear about again. And ATP is then generated and it, what can happen is it basically recycles NAD, which is a very important molecule in there, to help it stick around a little bit longer. The other thing it likes to do and is very good at doing is it actually optimizes and activates some of our hormone and, and receptors in the brain. So it has some anti-anxiety and anti-depression um, properties. Uh, which is part of the reason why you have to be careful with it. The other thing that it can do is that it provides this massive dose of energy, at least that's what it does for me, and mental clarity. Uh, and that's because of how it works in the brain. Now, I started taking it personally back in 2021 because I had brain fog from COVID. Within three hours of taking an oral capsule, it went away and never came back. So I was like, wow, this stuff was legit. Now, that uh, is one of the uses. You can use it for many different things. A lot of my patients who have cancer, who have um, uh, Lyme disease, uh, heavy metal poisoning like mercury and arsenic and, and gadolinium, uh, or if they have um, uh, you know, mold or mycotoxin poisonings, I use this to help boost their mitochondria. If you have a super perfect healthy mitochondria, then maybe it doesn't benefit fit you as much because your mitochondria is already really working well. But in general, this is a fantastic old school drug that is not patented, is not readily available in a regular pharmacy because it, in most people's opinion, don't have any uses, which it obviously does. It, it can be used to optimize your health. And that's why I use it. And that's why I use it for my patients.
You have to understand that it is not without its risks though. There's a couple things that you have to make sure the patient is not on before and, and, and doesn't have within them before you recommend it to them. The first thing is they can't be pregnant or breastfeeding. They have to check their G6PD level, which is a genetic test that if you have it or you don't, I'd say about 5% of people or so uh, have it positive. Usually they were from the Mediterranean region, but I've had people from Canada, I've had people from Cuba that have had it. So um, unfortunately you check that, it's a simple test at Quest or whatever. If it's negative, then you shouldn't have any issues, at least from a genetic perspective. The other thing is that you should not be on any stimulants like Adderall uh, or anything like that because it will make those much more strong. And you shouldn't be on certain antidepressants because there is an increased risk of something called serotonin syndrome. So some of those, which includes narcotics and includes a couple other things. So there is some cross reactivity. You do have to be careful. This is not something that you should just randomly go out and purchase online in a dropper form or a lozenge form because you have to be screened in my opinion and you don't know the quality of those. They are not held to the same standards that a pharmacist, that a, uh, a compounding pharmacy or that a drug manufacturer hold to. It'd be nice if they do and maybe they're clean and maybe they're not. I, I can't speak to any specific brands. So people say, which brand do you use? All of mine are compounded pharmacies and there's only a couple pharmacies I'm aware of that compounded. It's not super expensive, a dollar, maybe $2 a pill, depending on the dosage. You could start at five milligrams a day. I would probably not go higher than 100 milligrams a day. Uh, from an IV form, you can do that. If you're a bigger person, it, maybe you can tolerate about 150 milligrams a day. I would not go higher uh, than that, usually IV. Uh, over 200 because it becomes counterproductive and it can cause some issues. But overall, it's an awesome med. I've had patients that do it that have this amazing, uh, amazing burst of energy and focus. We use it for Alzheimer's, for Parkinson's, for brain optimization, for concussions, for anything that's neurological. If you do it in an IV form, if I were to draw this up and put it in a bag of a D5W, in five and a half minutes, it will saturate the brain and it will start to work within the mitochondrial cells in the brain. It's very, very fast acting. Um, in some people, it causes a bad detox reaction because it's getting rid of some of the stuff that's causing all your problems. So that's why they feel awful and they get scared by that. But if you know what you're doing, if, if you're uh, not cr creating an increased risk, it can be a fantastic medicine. Uh, but again, it is a medicine and you have to understand that it's just not something you can randomly, arbitrarily pick up and use without understanding its risks. Hopefully this was helpful. Again, I am Dr. Jesse Morse a family and sports medicine physician at the Osteopathic Center in Miami.